All right, hey guys, what's up? Back again. Uh, I'm sorry I've been kind of lacking with content. I was planning on doing a lot more and I had problems with my heart, so I had to go to the hospital one night and then I came home and it was like literally impossible for me to sleep because they were cutting trees outside. So that day was just like completely gone. Like I had to sleep and rest the whole time. And then I rest yesterday as well because I wanted to make sure that I was in like full working shape again, not like pressuring myself. And then before that I was having, I was like sick with something before that I wasn't even sure about. So hopefully I'm healthy now and I can actually get to it because I'm actually really excited to talk about the support meta and how it's really evolved and I think I'm going to make this like a two part so like the first part is going to be talking about the past supports that were used in Overwatch so I'll break down just like all the things that happened in the past basically from beta forward and then I'll make the second part basically what is happening now and what's happening now is basically every supports being used. Uh, I'm not going to talk about Bridget because I've not really had enough experience with her and there's not really been any pro gameplay of her and it's kind of hard to get a read on her because I feel like she's pretty underpowered. She's not that strong even though people have boasted how strong she is. So I'm going to talk about past Overwatch now and basically explain what would happen with it and then explain how we've transitioned into this current stage where it's like there's a lot more supports being used, a lot more compositions are being switched around and it's kind of not as defined as before. So, I'm not too aware with the beta. Like, I watched, like, some games, but back then I was more of a casual Overwatch player. But, I mean, from what I've seen, especially when there was no hero limit, I don't see it as as competitive. Like, it was kind of competitive, as in there was, like, a scene, and it was called competitive. But, I mean, if you look back at it from, like, our current state, like, seeing tracers with, like, sim shields and global zen orbs spawn camping permanently... Like, you just see it as, like, what the fuck is this? Um, so it was pretty random back in the beta. There was just, like, a lot of different supports being used. Sometimes there was, like, solo Zarya tanking, and the meta wasn't really figured out, and people were just using random supports, and it wasn't really... Also, back then, there was only three supports. It was Zen, Lucio, Mercy, so there really wasn't that many options. So it was it was a very confused time, and it wasn't really, like figured out at all i think people were trying to figure it out and so they're mostly just abusing like whatever was broken and just having a tracer with uh, the 25 sim shield on her and then a global zen orb was absolutely broken because she was basically unkillable um then they kind of like shifted it there there was some changes and then we had still no hero limit but there was like a lot of just really weird things happening like protect the president and on cough there was double lucio double tracer double winston and there was just like a lot of weird things whenever there was no hero limit so before that it was like wild wild west so it was just like random supports everything was being abused because there was no hero limit so you could just run absolute whack comps that didn't make any sense nowadays but uh i think we when we finally got no hero limit it started to be more competitive and it started to be like more ironed out like what people would play and then we started to see a lot more Lucio Mercy and Lucio Zen. Lucio Mercy especially whenever Hero Limit was like introduced and then there was like some Lucio Zen sprinkled in there as well. And then that was basically all that was played because there was only three supports. So the amount of combinations you could have was Lucio Zen, Lucio Mercy, Zen Lucio. And that was like actually all you could do. Or Zen Mercy. Did I say that? Whatever. Um but yeah, that was like all that there, all that what was there, and also Mercy, I think, was not changed yet. There was like, um, she got the heal increase, and then her passive got changed, and then her her passive healing got changed. And so there was a lot of changes that buffed her up eventually, that got her on the same point as Anna. But as soon as Anna was released, it, the meta just like completely shifted because it was like Anna Lucio every single game. Anna was such a higher tier pick than Mercy because. She could just put out more healing. She had way more impact. She had anti-nade. Her nano was an absolute fucking insane ability where everyone would just get nanoed and they had the movement speed, they had the damage boost, they had the damage reduction. They were absolutely unkillable. Rhines were being nanoed. Beyblades were being had. Everyone was unkillable. You just build nano, throw it at the enemy team, win the fight. So Lucio Anna stayed meta for a long time and I think that's due to just Anna being ridiculous and then we started to see the emergence of dive basically 
I don't know if Korea really spawned it. I guess you could say that. They popularized it, but they made Dive like super popular. And Anna was used somewhat in Dive, but I think it more so transitioned into Lucio Zen being the meta afterwards because Anna really just couldn't get that much value. And they figured out that like if your Zen is standing back and you discord someone and your entire team dives on top of it, it literally gets insta-killed and there's nothing the other team can do about it. So <clears throat> Zen rose to popularity as well as Anna. As soon as she would get Matrix, the Matrix was four seconds. So you just block all of her heals. You throw Winston bubble on her. You just throw people on top of her. And she had like a really tough time surviving and actually getting heals down. Zen had a similar issue, but I mean, at least he could keep heal orb on people and then like jiggle peek in so so he could just like keep it on people and not really have to like be actively healing all the time. But yeah, we had these longer metas with Lucio Anna and Lucio Zen that were really drawn out and it was like that was the only thing that was being played, like just that. I think there was sometimes being played like Lucio Mercy with Farah, but I mean... It was more so just spamming tanks and then spamming dive. And that was like the only thing that was being played. And it was like rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. There was no change in actual supports and like other heroes being picked. <clears throat> we had Lucio Zen for like a, quite a while. I, I'd say a few months at least. And then Lucio got some changes. And then we started to see Mercy get changed. And she got reworked. And then she rose to prominence instantly because of how insane her Valkyrie was. And... Really, she just got abused because, like, Valkyrie was insane, and then people also realized that you don't need Lucio to speed boost people in to get into a dive. Once you actually have your tanks set up, and you know your defaults, and you know where they're going to stand, you can just walk that route behind walls, and you don't have to actually speed boost there from main, and, like, you can get your dives off from flanks, and, like, you don't need everyone to just be speed boosted to actually end up getting a dive. Like, you can actually just walk to your spots, dive from a certain location, and then just get an effective dive off. So Mercy became popular because she gave out more healing than Lucio. She could, uh, like, usually if people were diving high ground, she could dive with the high ground with them. Or, in the situations where you have four people diving, Lucio wasn't the best to keep Zen alive. I think they found out that Mercy was better because you could just heal him more. Rather than trying to, like, boop and play this, like, mind game thing and, like, trying to, like, kite him out, you can actually just heal him through it. And then Zen could have an orb on someone, and Mercy could just heal him and damage boost him. And we ended up having that meta for a while, and it's still kind of there. I think it's important that it's somewhat changed, because I feel like it kind of got a little bit stale with how broken Mercy was. I'm more fine with it now that her res and Valkyrie got changed, so it's okay. But that was also meta for a while. But that was meta for the fact that Valkyrie was insanely broken. The other one was Anna was broken because everything. Uh, her ult, her healing, everything. And then they ended up nerfing a lot of those things, and then it changed and then Zen got changed, and then Mercy got changed. And so there's all these different changes that happened that caused nerfs and things to happen. And now I think we're finally at a point where after Moira got released, there was a little bit of spam of quad tank, and I still think some regions actually over-prioritize it more than others. Europe. But I think we're in a really, really good spot right now, because if you've noticed, quad tank can be played. It's Lucio Moira. Counter Dive can be played, it's Mercy Zen, Lucio Zen with Dive, it's Anna Lucio, very moderately, like it's like that's probably the least being played is Lucio Anna, or maybe some weird ones like Anna Zen or Anna Mercy, or just like weird things like that. But I think we've like reached a point where it's it stopped being that defined meta of like before it was just these are the only two sports being played. I guess there was a little bit of time where there was Sombra Lucio, but a lot of times it was just these two supports. And you'd see both supports, and people had like very defined roles. So it would be like, I'm a main support player. No, I'm a Lucio player. I'm a flex support player, which means basically I'm an Anna Zen player, or occasionally Mercy. And now I think we're reaching a point where it's, I'm a main support player, which means I will mainly play supports that aren't Zenyatta. I'm a flex support player, which means I will mainly play Zenyatta and other higher skilled, maybe flex, flex on like DPS and things like that. But I don't think we're in the stage before where it's going to be, I play Lucio for nine months in a row, or I play Anna Zen for 10 months in a row, or what something like that. I think we're in a stage where supports really have to be flexible and 
you've seen some teams, if the supports can't play certain things, if they aren't flexible enough to switch, if you can't play Lucio and Anna as a main support, if you can't play Zen and Anna or Zen and Sombra or different things like that, then you're really going to fall out of the meta and you're going to get replaced. So I really like that the way we've changed. I don't think like as a personal no, as a player myself, I don't like that Anna's become more popular for main supports because I've not been the best on her. I can play her at like an okay level, but I can't I can't play her at like a flex support level where people were like 4.5k playing her. I can play Lucio at that level, but as Anna, I just I struggle at that. So personally, it doesn't work as well for me. But you can see the rise of more skilled main support players who haven't just been playing Lucio. You can see Moth being on. Uh, SF Shock, he was brought in because he wasn't just a Lucio player. He could play Lucio Mercy. He, he's fine on Ana. Like, he can play a lot of different things, and I think that's important moving forward. And then in the part two, I'm going to talk about all the different new support comps that are being played and the prioritization of them like in different regions. So like Korea's playing something different than NA usually. EU's playing something different. Like They all have their own little different metas, but they're all distinct because... It's not the same supports being played all the time. There's a lot of different switches and things happening, so I'll talk about that in the next part.